everyone. In this video, I'm going to speak about column chromatography. Um, in the previous video, I spoke about um, the general or the basic principle of chromatography and different types of chromatography. And many of you um, asked me to uh, specify the column chromatography. So let's do it. Of course, when we say column chromatography, we might be mentioning several types of it. Adsorption, affinity, ion exchange, size exclusion, or gas chromatography. All of them are types of column chromatography. Of course, I'm not going to speak about all of them in this video. So I'm going to speak only about the adsorption chromatography and its automated technique, the HPLC. Um, and in, in the next videos, I'm going to speak about the other types. Now, what is adsorption chromatography? Adsorption, adsorption chromatography is the base, is the simplest type of column chromatography. Um, what would I use it for? Uh, the, the adsorption chromatography and the other types of, of uh, column chromatography is used to separate. It's a separation technique and it's used mainly to purify substances. So if I have a, one mixture, let's say, or one extract and I'm um, interested in isolating one chemical from this extract, then I can use adsorption chromatography to purify or to isolate one chemical from a mixture. Um, when I say chromatography, um, I should I should ask myself what is the characteristic of the substance I'm using to separate uh, or to purify the substances. In adsorption chromatography, the characteristic um, depending on in the chemicals is the solubility, or in other words, the polarity. I'm going to speak about this in details. Um, one other thing I should uh, think about when I speak about chromatography is the stationary phase and the mobile phase. In adsorption chromatography, we have solid stationary phase and liquid mobile phase. So we call it the liquid solid adsorption. Now let's speak in details. Um, as I told you, the column chromatography um, or the adsorption chromatography contains solid uh, stationary phase and a liquid mobile phase. So the stationary phase, the most used um, nowadays uh, is silica gel. Of course, there are other types of um, stationary uh, phases like uh, alumina, for example, but it's not widely used. Uh, cellulose was used uh, in the past, but not, but now it's rarely used or it's not used at all, I can say. So the most used one is silica gel. For the mobile phase, um, I use a liquid, which is normally an organic solvent, and I'm going to tell you why. So as I told you, the characteristic I use to separate the different chemicals from each other is the polarity. And to do so, I use a polar stationary phase, and this is very important. My stationary phase, which is silica gel, is polar. And a non-polar mobile phase, we, because of this we use organic solvent, because it's non-polar. Now, how does it work? Let's say I have a um, I have a sample and I need to um, separate the substances in my sample. What I have to do is I have to uh, apply my sample on the stationary phase, um, and then I should um, start to flush the uh, column with the mobile phase. Of course, I need to open the stopcock, so the mobile phase will move down or will migrate through the um, through the stationary phase like this and when the mobile phase will move through the stationary phase it will take the sample with um, the power here which will be moving the solutions down the stationary phase is simply gravity the mobile phase is going to take the sample and migrate through the stationary phase. Now, why you, what you need to do to know is that different substances in the mixture have different polarity or different different degrees of polarity. Some of them are polar, and we call them hydrophilic because you know water is polar, and polar substances 
can easily interact and dissolve in water. So because of this, we call them hydrophilic. And the nonpolar hydrophobic substances, which are the substances that cannot be mixed with water, so they are nonpolar. And this is very important. Now, when the different substances move through the, the, the stationary phase, the nonpolar substances will be easily mixed with the mobile phase. Why? Because the mobile phase is nonpolar, as you see here. The organic solvent is nonpolar. And so the nonpolar substances, the most nonpolar substances inside the mixture will be mixed with the mobile phase, and then they will migrate very fast through the stationary phase and they will be extracted out of the column with the mobile phase. The red substance you're seeing here is the most nonpolar substance. Then the, the, the less nonpolar substances or let's say, yeah, the less nonpolar substances will, uh, will dissolve less in the mobile phase and then they will stuck a bit into the silica gel and then they will move uh, slower while the, the the polar substances will not dissolve in the mobile phase and they will absorb on the silica gel because they are polar and the silica gel is polar so the polar substances will absorb on the silica gel and they will move really really slow um, slowly through the stationary phase and these substances are the polar ones. The polar substances will migrate really slowly and they, they, will be mi they will migrate not because of the mobile phase but because of the gravity and they will be extracted at the end. From here I can uh, collect the different substances so let's say uh, um, let's see how so this is the column cr adsorption chromatography. This is the column. We have a stationary phase. We have our sample applied uh, on the stationary phase. And then we apply the mobile uh, phase on it. The mobile phase is going to move through the stationary phase, taking the different um, uh, substances with. The red substance you're seeing here or the red chemical is the most nonpolar one, so it will dissolve in the mobile phase and it will migrate with it to be extracted out of the column. Of course, we need to ch to change the tubes here, the collecting the collecting tubes um, in time intervals. Let's say we should uh, change the tube every one minute or every two minutes. So at the beginning, we will be collecting only mobile phase. Then we will collect the first um, the first um, non-polar substance, then we will collect some mobile phase, and then the polar substance, which was adsorbed on the silica gel. And because of this, we call it adsorption chromatography, because the polar substances adsorb on the silica gel, and because of this, they will be separated from the non-polar substances. Now, of course, the... Um, the sample I'm collecting here contains um, the nonpolar substance with the mobile phase because it's dissolved in the mobile phase. And since the mobile phase here is an organic solvent, we can evaporate it using some heat source, using a heat source. Um, now, there is something you should know is that adsorption chromatography or column chromatography includes two phases, the normal phase and the reverse phase. You might, you may heard about reverse phase chromatography. So what is reverse phase chromatography and normal phase chromatography? Normal phase chromatography is exactly what I was um, speaking about. So both in both of them, we have the column we have the stationary phase, the sample, and the and the mobile phase. Now, the normal in the normal phase, as I told you, the stationary phase is polar, which is the silica gel, uh, and the mobile phase is nonpolar. So, um, in reverse phase, what we do is that we reverse the phases. So, we use a nonpolar stationary phase and a polar. Uh, mobile phase. Now, what we use in 
for, for the stationary phase in the reverse phase chromatography is alkyl chains covalently bond with the, um, with the solid support and these alkyl chains uh, are non-polar. Of course, and for the polar uh, for the polar solvent, of course, we will use an aqueous solvent, or we can maybe we can even use water. Um, in the normal phase, as I told you before, the nonpolar substances will uh, be dissolved in the mobile in the mobile phase, and then they will be extracted first. Then the less uh, nonpolar and then the polar substances will be absorbed on the silica gel. While in the reversed phase, it's the reverse, of course. So the polar substances will be dissolved in the polar phase. So in the polar mobile phase and so they will be extracted first and then the uh, the, the middle ones and then the non-polar ones they will be absorbed on the non-polar stationary phase now why would i when would i use a uh, normal phase and stationary phase of course if I, if I have a sample and i'm interested in one chemical in this sample sample and this chemical is um is polar then it's easier for me and faster to use reverse phase because if i if i'm um because if i use the reverse phase the polar substance will be extracted first and more efficiently while if i use normal phase the polar substance will be absorbed on the silica gel so it will not be extracted really efficiently um, and it will take much time to be extracted out of the tube so if I if I'm interested in one non-polar substance, it's better to apply the normal phase. While if I'm interested in uh, isolating a, a polar substance, it's better to apply the reverse phase. This is reverse phase chromatography and normal phase chromatography. Now, of course, adsorption chromatography, as any other technique, has advantages and disadvantages. The advantages here is efficiency. Um, uh, it's efficient and simple to apply. It's not hard. It's not um, very difficult to apply. It's uh, it's uh, easy to apply and it's efficient. I can I can get really good results uh, from it, and it's not expensive, especially uh, because the stationary phase here is this um, is. Uh, it's disposable so um, so I can reuse it actually I can reuse the stationary phase I can flush it out again with the uh, with the mobile phase and I can reuse it again the disadvantage is it that um, it that the, the adsorption chromatography sometimes might be time-consuming now nowadays uh, the adsorption chromatography um, has been automated and I think all of you have heard already about HPLC which is the high performance liquid chromatography or some people call it high pressure liquid chromatography HPLC is nothing but adsorption chromatography but it's automated so this is HPLC in this um, inside this machine we have different columns uh, different columns and they are adsorption chromatography, adsorption column chromatography, and it's related with a computer where we can see the results. Inside the machine, inside the HPLC, we have these steps. So first of all, we have the solvent, which is the mobile phase. We have a pump, and this pump we, we didn't see in the normal chromatography. This pump will um, uh, will pump the solvent into the HPLC column. And here is the sample. So here we inject our sample, which we want to separate. The solvent or the mobile phase will take the sample and migrate through the column. The HPLC column is, as I told you, nothing but an adsorption column chromatography. So inside we might, there might be a silica gel or any other stationary phase. The substances will move through the column and they will be separated according to their polarity, as I told you before. 
And then we have a detector, which is going to detect uh, every substance uh, coming out of the column. The detect, like there are many detectors used in uh, HPLC. It might be mass spectrometer, um, spectrophotometer, spectrofluorometer. It might be many types of uh, detectors. When we detect the substances uh, who are coming out of the column, we are we will get result like results similar to this so we will get different peaks every peak uh, of these represent one uh, chemical coming out out of the column so um, the let's say the most non-polar will be the first and then the second then the polar will be the last so this is uh, the time axis and this one is the signal axis i will also speak about this later um of course, as I told you, here we have something uh, very important, which is the pump. So we apply a pressure to increase the velocity of the mobile phase through the uh, stationary phase or through the column. And this is what we call um, high pressure liquid chromatography or high performance liquid chromatography, because this one is faster than the normal column chromatography. In normal column chromatography, as I told you, we, we depend only on gravity. We don't have a pump to press the mobile phase through the stationary phase while in hplc we have a pump and we to choose the velocity of course we can increase the velocity to um to perform the uh, column chromatography or the adsorption chromatography faster but we should think about something if we increase the velocity of the mobile phase a lot then we will um uh, we will lose the efficiency of the performance why? Because if the mobile phase moves so fast through the column, uh, th through the stationary phase, the chemicals will have no time or uh, yeah, the chemicals will have no time to interact between the stationary phase and the mobile phase. And the, um, if the polar uh, chemicals will have no time to, ad to be absorbed on the uh, stationary phase. And because of this, we might lose uh, the efficiency of the technique of course to um in order to choose the um the ideal flow rate for the mobile phase there is one equation called the van diemter equation scientists uh, and this is this is the van diemter equation scientists um uh, combine different factors in this equation so we have the hetp which is the re resolving power of the column how the how much the column can can resolve the a uh, a is the channeling th through the, the the stationary phase b is the diffusion coefficient uh, of the eluting uh, particles how much the particles can uh, diffuse through the stationary phase um, the c is the uh, resistance uh, of the mass uh, the resistance to the ma of the analyte uh, to mass transfer between the stationary phase s and the mobile phase m while u is the velocity so this equation uh, allows us to choose the ideal flow rate of the mobile phase through the stationary phase. Now, at the end, we, as I told you, because we have a detector, we will get results similar to this graph. So this is the time axis, as I told you, and this is the signal axis. Um, this is the first substance, the second, the third, I'm getting um, uh, out of the column. So, um, of course, the height of the peak represent um, the amount or the concentration of the substance in my mixture but not only the height of, but also the width so in order to know exactly the amount or the concentration of a certain chemical in my mixture um, i should calculate the surface of the peak um, yeah, this is everything I wanted to tell you about adsorption chromatography and about HPLC. I hope you get good information from this video. If you do, though, um, please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions for uh, 
for other few for other videos please write me in the comments if you have any questions don't hesitate to write me uh, in the comments um, and see you in the next video bye